Recently, I made a pretty risky decision with my eBay business. I turned best offers on for my entire store, all 1,047 items. Now, that in and of itself is not all that risky, but I also decided that for an entire week, I was going to accept every single offer I got, no matter how low the offer was. And I've got some pretty expensive items in my store, like this lithograph from the late Kazakhstani artist, Evangi Sidorkin, that is valued at over $1,500. Or this giant pile of brand new with tags, Patagonia puffer jackets. The idea that any buyer could swoop in and offer literally any amount was a pretty scary prospect. Little did this buyer know that they could have literally offered any amount and I would have accepted it. But I think you'll be surprised at what happened. Now, why would I do this stunt? Historically, I've been against using best offers in my eBay reselling strategy. While there are some scenarios where it makes sense to turn best offers on, I argued in a video on the topic I made last year that there were plenty of reasons why you should consider not doing it. Why advertise that you're willing to take less? As a seller, this positions you from a point of weakness, giving the buyer the upper hand in a negotiation. It's like putting up a sign that says pay me less. I also hate the time that gets gobbled up by people who send lowball offers. And even though eBay lets you set a minimum offer amount, I found that I didn't always remember to turn this on. And I hate the idea that someone can accept a best offer and then just decide not to pay, which means you have to wait a few days for the sale to expire before relisting the item. It's a total pain. I also worry that if I have best offers turned on, nobody will pay full asking price for my items. But look, if there's one thing I've learned over the last few decades of entrepreneurship, it's that you should be careful holding too firmly onto specific strategies or beliefs. Every industry is in a constant state of change, and reselling is no different. If you hold too firmly onto the specific strategies or beliefs and don't open yourself up to change, you're gonna lose out on opportunities. So, not only is it a bad idea to avoid change, you should instead actively seek it out. You should always be assessing your business strategies and questioning your long-held beliefs because things change. So were these long-held anti-best offer opinions of mine outdated? That's what I wanted to find out. So I turned best offers on for everything in my store, and then I waited. Hello. All right, I just got my first offer here. Uh, this is on a Kenner Care Bears uh, little plush here. It's listed at $14.99. I got an offer of, okay, $12. So $2.99 uh, lower, not bad, but it has free shipping on it. So I think I'm probably gonna lose, lose, lose some money on this one. I don't know, let's see. So I didn't end up losing money on this one, but I didn't make a whole lot either. I only had a net return of $4.43 on this Kenner Care Bear. Accepted another best offer today on this DeWalt tool that I bought for five bucks at a garage sale. It's listed at 50 bucks. Got an offer for 40 and I had to take it, so it did. Then we had this Microsoft Xbox 360 Slim that I got at a garage sale for 20 bucks. It was originally listed for $69.98. I took a 14% off best offer for $59.99. My net return ended up being $26.73 on this one, so not too bad, but did give up 10 bucks on this one. This is a perfect example of the type of thing I wouldn't do a best offer on, because this uh, this Xbox would have sold at full price, no problem. These Timberland Stormbuck leather shoes went for $33.99. That was a $3.50 discount, 9% uh, was the offer on that one. So again, I lucked out on that one. The net return ended up being $20.72 for these Timberland Stormbuck leather shoes. Then I had these Nike Dunk Low Retro Halloween shoes. These things were really cool. I got these at an estate sale for 20 bucks and they ended up selling for $125 and free shipping. They're originally listed at $149.99 uh, free shipping. So this was a 17% discount on this one. Little did this buyer know that they could have literally offered any amount and I would have accepted it. Fortunately, they only offered $25 less. So I got pretty lucky on that one. Didn't take too much of a hit on this one. These are Martin Classical Guitar Strings. I ended up taking a best offer of $10. They're originally listed for $12.60. It's a 21% best offer. I lost $2.60 on that one. So no big deal. Net return was only $2.96. So didn't make a whole lot on that one. Here's another one I was super worried about, this Vintage Dawn Post Studio Mask. I had it listed for, what, $385, which I did list it high, but this thing is really awesome. I got it at a garage sale for only a dollar. These Dawn Post Studio Masks are really valuable. And I got—I was on a run when I got this offer, and I was super nervous. I got an offer of $250 on that Halloween mask that I have listed for $370. It's a little low, but it did say I was gonna accept all offers, so I think it's a fair offer. I only paid a dollar for it, and uh, 
could make a lot of money. So offer accepted. Ended up being 33% off. So a decent chunk percentage off. That's $128 less. I still got a net return of $203.06 on it. So considering I only invested a dollar, I don't feel too bad. You know, it does suck to lose out on a hundred bucks on this, but I, like I said, I priced it high and I was happy with $256. So it's all good. This is some RAM for a computer. It sold for $19.99. It was originally listed for $31.98, and so that's a 37% discount. So that one's pretty steep. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have taken this offer had I not been doing this experiment. So the net return was $13.96. I ended up losing out almost $12 on this one by taking that best offer, so not a good one. Another video game piece here. This is a Microsoft Xbox One Connect. These things are pretty old. It sold for $22.99. Looks like it was listed at $24.98 and it was only $1.99 off, an 8% offer. That was the lowest percentage off that I gave for anything during this experiment it was 8% here. My net return was $13.09. I would have made about $15 had I not have taken the best offer. Here's a little coffee mug, vintage Gateway 2000. If y'all remember, if you're my age, you might remember Gateway 2000. I really like selling mugs. They're not worth a whole lot of money, but uh, I like collecting them, I like selling them, and I think they're fun. And this one sold for $15, free shipping. It looks like it was originally listed at $18.99, so $3.99 less, that's 21% less. The net return was only $4.50. Uh, here we go, here's some light switches. I got these at a garage sale for $2 a piece. They sold for $30 and free shipping. They were originally listed at $34.99. I took a $30 best offer. That's $4.99 off or 14%. My net return was $18.45, so not too bad. On this, we have here some Shetland Chunky Yarn. I think I got this at a thrift store. Yeah, $3.30 at a thrift store a couple of months ago. It sold for $14, free shipping. It was originally listed at $20, so I took six bucks off, 30% off. The net return was only $3.82, so I definitely wouldn't have taken a best offer on this one either. It just wouldn't have made sense to sell it for only $3.82, but it's out the door. Here's a pair of Nike sandals. These things were brand new. What were these listed at? These were listed at $36.98. I ended up taking $24.32. That's a 34% discount. Uh, I lost $12.66 on it. The net return was only $8.41. I definitely would not have taken this best offer had I not been doing this experiment. Uh, it, you know, it just, I would have held out for the right price on this one. So that was unfortunate, but it was only $12 loss. All right, this is an inmate Iraqi freedom t-shirt. Kind of weird, where did I get this? An estate sale for only a dollar. It sold for $27.99. It was originally listed at $32.98. So that's about a $5 discount or 15%. My net return ended up being $17.44. So not too bad. I would have taken that best offer all day. Here's three pairs of Levi's 527 jeans, all in the same size. They sold for $46.99 on best offer. They were originally listed at $56.98, so that's $10 off, 18%. The net return was $16.74. Probably wouldn't have taken this best offer. I would have countered probably at a $5 discount and probably still made the sale, but $16.74 for the net return for these three pairs of jeans. That's unfortunate. We got this Porta Brace. This is a video photography vest. I had this thing listed for a long time. It sold for $109.99, but it was originally listed $184.99. So that's a 41% discount. That's the largest discount I gave throughout this entire experiment. Ended up being $75 off. It wasn't the most money off. That was the Dawn Post Studio Mask, but it was the highest percentage at 41%. Still, my, my net return was $72.79. I don't really mind on this one. I ended up... Uh, you know, it's listed for eight months, so that's fine. Happy to get it out the door. And then I had these 511 tactical pants. These things, I don't remember what they actually sold for, but this is the only one where I accepted a best offer and they didn't pay, so. At the end of this week-long experiment, I had a total of 40 sales, and 17 of those were on best offer. If I would have sold everything at full price, I would have had a gross sale amount of $1,163.35. But after accepting every offer that a buyer sent me, I ended up with $849.24 in gross sales, or $314.11 less than the full asking price. On average, these 17 buyers got a 22% discount, but 23 of the 40 sales went at full asking price. So the fear that just because I had turned best offers on, nobody would pay full price was false. And even though I was accepting the best offer no matter what the price, I only let a few things go for a price that I wasn't really comfortable with. That photography vest went for a whopping 41% less than the asking price, and out of the 17 best offers accepted, only one decided not to pay. So all of my fears were basically wrong. I did lose out on about $300 less than I would have had I not accepted the best offer, 
but who knows how much longer it would have taken to sell these items at full price. So in the end, would I do this again? Absolutely not. It's not a great idea to accept every best offer that gets sent to you. I'm lucky I didn't end up worse off than I did. But I do think that my hesitation to use best offers were unfounded, and I will be turning them on for most items I list in the future. One of the most crucial things you can do for your reselling business is keep accurate records. With the IRS expected to lower the income threshold for eBay reporting from $20,000 to $5,000 next year, this becomes even more important. So that means if you exceed $5,000 in gross sales this year, eBay will report that as income to the IRS for you. This means you need to be tracking your reselling expenses closely to reduce your taxable income effectively. If you enjoyed these videos and want to support the channel, Flipwise is a tool I built specifically to help resellers like me and you track those expenses automatically. By using Flipwise, not only are you getting a powerful tool to automate your eBay reselling business and simplify tax time, but you're also helping to support the channel and ensure that I can keep making videos like this one. Flipwise automates your record keeping by importing all of your active listings and sold items going back Back two years. If you're behind on record keeping, Flipwise makes it easy to catch up in no time. And while it's focused on eBay, Flipwise also lets you manually record sales from other marketplaces like Mercari, Facebook Marketplace, Poshmark, and even local sales. It also provides unique insights into your reselling business, such as which sourcing locations are performing best, your best and worst sales, and metrics like ROI and net profit margin. You can also track business expenses like shipping supplies, subscription fees, and other tax deductible expenses. Flipwise is free to use for new sellers with small stores and for everyone else, check the description below for a promo code to get 20% off your first month. As always, thank you so much for your support.